he, the goal is to move this hydraulic, this road, up this, up to this. So, um, the way that we can do this is by finding a point to rotate it around. So this specific point, we want to move up to this specific point. So if I find, if I use this tool to find the center, and then I take one of them and I rotate it 90 degrees, um, then I find the point that is exactly 90 degrees in between. Like this angle will always be 90 degrees for any two points. And then what I can do is support this point. So basically like this can't move now because it's a triangle. So this point won't move. So I could rotate around that point. And then I can copy this arm over to here. So if both of these points are moving in the same way, the road will stay flat. And then I can use this to also support that. So basically now I have these which are not moving and then these two arms which are connected to these two points. And then if I attach a hydraulic to the arm, it will pull it. Um, it will pull it up. But in this case, um, what happens is, if you look, this goes up, and this road is being used to move this metal arm. But once it gets to this part where it's flat, there's really nothing pushing up this piece, so it kind of just falls with the weight of the car. So then what you can do is put a triangle here, and here, and connect them. And then, when it's at that point, then this part will still be pulling up that point, so it can keep going up. And then now it will make it to the fly. Yeah, I guess it's... No, I'm a sophomore in high school, not an engineer. Okay, I'm a secret engineer. This one is very similar to the last one, but I need to move it down instead of moving it up. So, I'll start with the road. And then I do the same process. I will f use this tool to find find the center, then grab one of the corners, rotate it 90 degrees. What are the green things on your road? Oh, these are split joints. Basically, if you double click a, p a joint, it turns it into a split joint which makes it so that um, when there's a hydraulic phase, anything labeled 2 will disconnect, and anything labeled as lock will stay connected. So I turn it to this so that the road can leave. Um, so then I have this rotation point, 90 degrees. So now, if I can support these pieces, then it will be able to rotate to the correct place. So I'll use this to support those points. And then it, it does rotate to the right place, but the hydraulic isn't controlling it, so it rotates too far. So I add the hydraulic here. And you can see like the white part is where it contracts in. When it's done contracting, it will be exactly this much, so it will end right there. So that's pretty much perfect. In some cases where it isn't the perfect amount, like where it isn't 2 meters, you'll have to use like a lever, which I'll show you in the next level. And I think this one's going to have the same instability issue, so I'll have to support it. See, when it gets here, there's nothing holding up that point, so it kind of just falls down too quickly. So I'll throw this in. And 
And then when it comes to that bar's holding it up. Okay. This level, I'm going to show you how to make it so you can move more than just um, two meters. So, in this level, you only have one road, so you have to have this road move from here to over here. So, I'll do that. And then, I'll use this tool. I want to move this point to this point, so then I find the center point. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's stupid. It doesn't realize that it can... What the heck? I think the trace tool is just dumb. Wait, okay, the center point is here. And then rotate it, and then you get here. So the rotation point is here. And then I can copy this over. But then if I use the hydraulic to pull this... It only pulls it two meters when it has to move it it has to move it over by four meters so then i need to attach stop judging me in a vc then so then what i can do is attach something that will move two meters to it and then attach it as a lever so then if i push this thing when it moves two meters to up here, then it will be 90 degrees different. So that means this piece will also be 90 degrees different, which will put it exactly where we want it to be. So then when it stops here, it'll come all the way over. Pretty much any movement when you're using hydraulic is going to be based off of 90 degrees. And so whenever you need something to rotate 90 degrees, you attach it here with... <laughs> Skirful, you're throwing me off. Yeah, see, this is helpful. Okay. So, you have the... Any hydro... Okay, if you want something to move 90 degrees, you attach a hydraulic to a bar that is 1.41 meters long and is pointed in 45 degrees in a direction. And then if you push that with a full hydraulic, that will move 90 degrees. And then anything it's attached to, like this, can also move 90 degrees to its correct point. Okay, so this one, this is very similar to the, because this, yeah, this is just um, two meters of movement, so it's fairly easy. I can just um, use the tracer tool. Oops. Uh, this workshop map is called Easy Hydraulic Challenges, and the code is this. Um, I'll put it in chat. Okay. So. Then. Oh, I skipped a step. Um, so. I can use this. Find the center point, take one of them, rotate it 90 degrees. Also, I'm using a mod to rotate it 90 degrees quickly, but I'm assuming that you can figure that out. And then, those are the two things. Support them using steel. The better rotation mod. And then, if I attach this here, Right, it can split joint that. 
Um, so the mod makes it so if I press Q or E instead of rotating one degrees, it does 90 degrees. And then if I do instead of if I want to do smaller ones, then no, it's not 90 or 180, it's 90 or 45. Rotating 180 is just flipping and... Wait, no, it isn't. It, there is a use to rotate 180, but... Okay. Um, and then for other movements, you can do Control-Shift-Scroll, and then that does one degree. Um, and then, Or you could do Control-Scroll, which rotates faster. And it's just a better rotation... You corrected yourself, but I saw it before you corrected it. I'm not trying to be mean to you. <laughs> um, because I installed pretty much all of them. Most of them I never use, but occasionally I do use them. Okay, so... So... The important mods... I would recommend having the better rotation mod. This is my mod, so I'm a little biased, but it's it's really useful. And I'd recommend having the colored bridge pieces mod. This lets it so if you hold down a certain keybind while you place a bridge piece, it will place it with a color. And this is really useful like in hydraulics to keep it organized. Like I like to make any piece that doesn't move red so that I know that it's not moving. And when you have more complicated stuff, like, that's really helpful. And the other mods you can use would be... The Twitch mod's really useful for submitting your bridges to the Twitch extension. Um, you can submit it from in-game. I'll explain that in a second. Wider roads is useful because it lets you track the roads. Like you can see the roads better because normally they show up behind the hide, like the steel. And if you have a ton of steel, you can't see the roads at all. But with this, the roads show up in front of the steel. Um, Scarfle, can you send it? And then. Some fun mods would be the camera mod. It lets you use like first person view. It lets you use. Yeah, you can use first person view and you can like follow the camera. Another fun one is the gravity mod, which lets you fool with the gravity levels. And the longer material mods is fun. Okay, so you want me to explain how this works again, right? Oh, to, how to explain the color mod, not how the bridge works. Okay, so when a piece is not moving, like if you look in this, um, these are the pieces that move, and these are the pieces that don't move. If the piece doesn't ever move, I like to color it red so that I know I can attach stuff to it. And when you have like a lot of stuff going on, you'll forget what is which, and having the colors can help you remember. Okay. So I'll go to the next one. So this is a little more complicated. So let's say we want to move both of these roads up. We would start by doing the same process as normal. You go like this. Oh. You go like that. Copy it. Rotate it that then we move, move this put it in all the spots and then we'd reinforce it we'd color it red because we can and then we'd want to attach our hydraulics to it but then we realize oh wait i only have one hydraulic so then you have to be creative The halfway point okay so i use the trace tool and i set it to line and i put it between the two points and then 
I use this slider to set the max length to 1. Basically, you just want to set it to something that's less than the... Yeah, a lot of times you can just kind of eyeball it, especially over time. But I'm just using it every time so that you can remember how to do it. Um, so you just set this slider to something that's less than the length of the tracer. So like in this case, it's 2 meters. So if the slider is anything more than 2 meters, it won't actually make it in two pieces. It will just do one. So it needs to be less than 2 meters, but also greater than one third of the distance because you want it to be in basically exactly two pieces. So then when you press fill in, then you get the center point. And then you can grab one of them and rotate it. And then that's 90 degrees. Okay, so then for this, I already need, um, so for this, yes, I did code the better rotation mod. I also coded the longer materials mod. So for this, I'd want to pull this up and I'll use that. But there's a few problems here. One is that that problem happens. Another is that this doesn't get lifted up. So the way that we'd lift this up is if we connect these two pieces, then when this one gets lifted up, that one gets lifted up too. But we have that really bad instability issue. So then we can make our triangles to fix the instability. And connect each of them. But then we still end up with instability in the middle. So we can just connect these triangles like that. And boom. They both lift. Um, Polybridge is written in C sharp, so the mods have to be written in C sharp. So that's what I use for Polybridge modding. But I know a lot of other languages. So do you understand this part? Okay. Okay, so for this level, um, when you're not completely sure what happens, like in one like this, it's not really obvious, you can press this I up in the corner, and then it shows you the hydraulic phases. So it says that this car goes, goes to the stop sign, and then there's a hydraulic phase after it hits the stop sign, so we'd want a road to lift up, and then it goes again at A1. And then it drives, and then when it hits the stop sign, then we have another hydraulic phase, which would be a road lowering. And then it would start up again, which is us hitting the flag. So for this level, we have two options. We could either have this road raise, and then this road lower. Or we could have two roads, and they both raise and lower together. I'll do both of them. The first one... Um, having it raise and then lower. Also, I... Okay, I'll, I'll do the steps. Get the halfway point. And then... Get this. Copy it. That rotation point. And then... Reinforce it. Auto split mod is for speed running. It does speedrunning splits. You don't need it. So if we look at this, this, this is basically the first level. This is just a copy of the first level in this campaign. And then this section is going to be a copy of the second level in this campaign. Okay, so this is a case of when you actually need to set the split joint numbers. If you look at this, 
these pieces disconnect because they are connected to this road. But this piece, it needs to stay still because it's part of this. And this piece needs to stay still because it's holding the hydraulic. So we have to make those lock. And then this here. And then when we run this, both of the motions work. But then we have a problem, which is pretty clear. Um, this one moves down on the first phase, but we want it to stay still. So what we can do is go into this controller thing. We click on the first phase, and we can see that all of these are turned on. What we do is we turn off the second part, and then in the second phase, we can turn off the first part. So that's one way to solve this level. And then the other way is basically the same solution to the previous level, which is having both the roads go up and then them both go down. We did that by getting the rotation for it. And copying it for all of them. And then reinforcing it. And then we connected it. And then we made the triangles. And connected them. Okay, so then when this goes... They'll go like that, and then it just works. That's the end of this campaign. And I'm gonna end stream now. But if you are interested, I could stream again and teach you more.